Today, we address that age-old topic that every parent must eventually explain to their children. That's right. We're talking about the birds and the trees. Today's episode is for the birds, and we couldn't be happier. We have two contestants ready to show their backyard know-how and learn even more as they compete to see who can best assist Mother Nature in spreading her branches and providing for our feathered friends. Today on Tough Grit. Shannon, what are you oh, up to? Caleb, check it out. I built the most perfect birdhouse. Wow, the perfect birdhouse, huh? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, check it out, it's got hot and cold running bird bath, a separate nursery for the eggs, and I'm even gonna put on a little satellite dish so the birds can watch our show from the comfort of their own nest. Well, that's <laughs> awesome, but yeah. let me ask you something. Uh-huh. Where's the door? Door, door. I can't believe I forgot the door. No wonder I didn't have any place to put this. What's that? A tiny little mail slot. Well, don't worry, Shannon. Today's episode is all about creating the perfect bird habitat. All right, well, we better hurry up. I'm expecting some very important air mail. Maybe you've always enjoyed watching the birds in your yard or field, but you weren't quite sure about how to attract certain species to your area. Or perhaps you want to create an oasis of privacy or provide a place for those birds to perch, but you were unsure about tackling the job of planting trees. Or perhaps you don't know where to get the right bird products, such as feed or housing. Let's face it, when it comes to the birds and the trees, we've all found ourselves in a big pile of tough grit. That's where we come in. I'm Shannon Riley. And I'm Caleb Regan. Making your yard a pleasant place for your family and the wildlife you want to attract is a big and important job, and we're here to help you get it done right. We'll also give you the best products and give you the know-how you need. And we even have a couple of neighbors here ready to go beak to beak in our bird-based challenges. Let's meet them. Our first contestant is Holly Journey from Lawrence, Kansas. Holly is a handy woman, gardener, writer, artist, and super mom. As a child, Holly had a pet bird she took everywhere, especially on holiday outings. Her favorite was in October when they would go trick or tweeting. And contestant two is Stephanie Patterson. Stephanie grew up on a farm in Garden City, Missouri. She is a painter and has one son, Zion. Stephanie used to have a parrot that she taught to say grace before each meal. She called it her bird of prey. Welcome, ladies, to Tough Grit. Now the moment you've been waiting for, to find out what your project is today. Your Tough Grit Challenge is... Planting a tree and building a bird habitat. For their first challenge, the contestants will dig an appropriate sized hole by hand. Then they will transplant a tree, backfill the hole, water it thoroughly, and mulch. The second challenge is all about attracting birds, both with homes and food. Contestants will be installing feeders and birdhouses of various types to create habitats for our feathered friends. They could be real cardinal condos, or maybe even a robin rentals with a bird's eye view. And don't worry if this seems like a big leap. We've got a pair of experts here, ready to help you leave the nest with confidence. Our first expert is Hank Will, editor-in-chief of Grit Magazine. Hank knows all about creating a bird habitat. He's had a family of sparrows nesting in that beard for years. And our tractor supply company expert is Kim Fister, the friendly store manager from Williamstown, Kentucky. Kim is nuts about birds. In fact, she once opened a tavern that was decorated only with pictures of blackbirds on the walls. She called it the crowbar. These experts will guide you and coach you as you tackle your challenges today. But you need to stick to our three criteria of accuracy, efficiency, and safety. Whichever one of you does the best, and those three categories will walk away with up to a $1,000 gift card to Tractor Supply Company. Wow, $1,000 could really feather your nest in style. I mean, if that's what you're into. You'll also get to use some great products and tools on your project, such as a purple martin barn, an assortment of royal wing feeders, a bluebird box, and a shovel and clamshells for planting your trees. I know our contestants can't wait to dig into their first challenge, but let's go to our experts to find out what to expect when planting new trees. Holly, most trees do better if they're planted in full sun, so you want to be sure that you, you, you know where you're going to put the trees ahead of time. You want them to get at least several hours of sunshine a day for most species. 
The ideal times to plant are, are really in the spring and the fall, when the, or, or even the winter if your soil's loose, but when the trees are dormant, those are the best times. Uh, evergreens, you might better prefer to plant them in the spring after the drying winter winds are, are over, but before the wet spring rains sort of come and make it tough to dig. But if you've got bald and burlap trees, like, like this particular tree, or trees that are grown in containers that are leafed out and alive, you can pretty much plant them anytime. Okay, Stephanie, when you're looking to purchase your tree, you want to make sure you don't choose any trees with large root bounds on them. You want to get the trees with the smallest circling roots as you can. Um, when you get them home and you're trying to get them out of the container to put them in the hole, you can cut off the roots that are basically going out of the holes of the container or out of the burlap itself. And then you can worry about the pruning of the tree later. You want to leave as many leaves on the tree as you can. It helps with the growth of the tree and the development of the tree within the first year. Holly, when handling any tree, even a large specimen like this, you want to grab it by the trunk, down low towards the root, or by the root ball itself. That way you'll avoid damaging it. The first step in the process is to create the hole. The hole should be about twice the diameter of the root ball and about half again as deep as the root ball. Do you have any tips for making it easier to dig? Well, you know, if the soil's moist, it's pretty straightforward for digging. Uh, and if the soil's really hard and dry, I'd say sprinkle the area for a couple of days before you uh, go ahead and dig the hole. When it comes time to dig your hole, you want to make sure you dig it big enough for the tree. In almost every case, you want to dig it bigger than you really feel necessary. But in the long run, this will give more soil around the tree, so the rainfall, whenever it falls off the tree, into the loose soil will pull the nutrients back into the tree for the roots to grow and expand as the tree grows in its first year. Holly, if the tree was bald and burlap, you'll want to cut, cut the burlap away from the trunk of the tree so it won't sort of constrict it, but you can leave it on there because it's a natural material and it should rot away. If it was wrapped with uh, a plastic burlap-like material, you'll want to be sure to cut that away and pull it off or it could strangle some of the roots. Then go ahead and, and set the, the root into the uh, hole, and at this point you can add any soil amendments that you might want to for backfilling. Uh, if your soil needs some clay to, to sticky it up a little bit, or, or you could add peat moss to give it some good water holding capability. And the final step is to build a ridge around the hole so that uh, it'll trap moisture when it rains and it'll make it easier for you to water it with a hose. You can just fill up that space, that little reservoir, and it'll soak in nice. Is it more important to provide a lot of water or to water daily? It's more important to water thoroughly rather than frequently. The best thing to do actually is to set your garden hose on a trickle, let it run right next to the tree so it can just run over a slow period of time, give the tree plenty of time to absorb it rather than kind of flooding the tree. It's also best if you could add a thick layer of mulch that'll help hold the water and the moisture in around the tree and give it plenty of time to absorb into the soil. And now it's time for our first challenge. Our contestants are going to plant a Canada red cherry tree. Using the tools provided, each contestant must dig the proper sized hole, then correctly place the tree without damaging the root ball. Then fill in the soil and apply water and mulch. Whoever's done first will win. But don't leaf any steps out. If problems arise, we're going to make you go back and fix them, costing you precious time. Good luck to you both. Ready, set, go. Ah, they're off to a flying start. Holly got her shovel in first. I kind of like that jumping technique. That's good. Get that, you get a good six inches on that thing. Straight off. Something tells me you've dug some holes before. Yeah, I've dug some holes before. This is why I always carry two groundhogs in my pocket. Wouldn't it be cool if they found pirate treasure? You're going to have the footprint of this thing knocked out in no time. You are an excavator. When we come back, we'll find out which contestant is a natural nature nurturer and who turns in a true tree tragedy when we return to Tough Grit. Creating an attractive backyard haven for birds includes offering one or more sources of fresh water, even into the winter if you can. Birds need to drink water to keep their metabolic functions going, and when hot, they will often take a cooling dip that also serves as a bath of sorts, but is not as effective at removing parasites as a dust bath. No matter the actual purpose, watching birds in the water is quite a spectacle. Ponds and other permanent water features make perfect bird watering stations, and you won't have to refill them very often. If you build a water feature with birds in mind, try to create shallow areas where the birds can wade and keep them sufficiently open that the birds can see what's around them and feel safe. If your design includes a stream, try to build it so that the water will pool in the shallows here and there. Standalone bird baths make a more prevalent and easy to install water station. They consist of a relatively broad and shallow container that can be set on the ground or into a rock feature in the garden. 
Add watering stations to feeders, foliage, and housing, and you'll have an endless supply of avian entertainment to sustain you throughout the year. We're in the thick of our first challenge of planting trees. Team Grit and Team Tractor Supply are both working up a sweat. Good thing we'll have two shade trees to rest under soon, huh? And one of these ladies will be fanning herself with a $500 gift card from Tractor Supply. Well, you know what they say, when the going gets tough, I usually get going. And I'll come back when it's not so tough anymore. There you go. It looks like it's getting a little softer, is it? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Piece of cake. Try to get your shovel down as deep as far as you can because that'll loosen up a big, bigger chunk of it for you. It's a little bit of a difference in technique. Holly went around the perimeter of her hole, got it all loose, and then popped the middle out. Now her edges are just popping up nice and effortlessly. Now Hank can give real good advice about the shovel because that's the same kind of shovel he uses at breakfast every morning. Doing good, keep going. Got a long way to go. Stephanie's still working on getting the perimeter of her whole dug. Maybe if you try holding the shovel straight down, you might get a little deeper in and get a better angle to get it into the ground. There you go. Looks like Holly has her entire perimeter dug. Now it's just a matter of getting down to 18 inches there in the middle. 18 in the center. Can we take, do, does it taper towards the edges? Or? Uh, tapers just a little bit, but, but, but not, not too much. So could probably taper it to about seven, uh, 16, 15, 16 by the edge. Somewhere a gopher is watching these two and just shaking his head. Stephanie got her entire perimeter dug. Now it's just a matter of getting down to 18 inches. I love this challenge. It's down and dirty. Holly now hitting all kinds of clay. Looks like your deepest part's at about 12 inches. We gotta get to 18. That's 18. Yep, you're good. Holly's got her hole dug. Now she needs to place her tree. Stephanie, you're close. Yep. Here's three foot. Now clean all that soil out of there and you're good to go after that. <laughs> I love it, I love it, Holly. But it sure is effective. And now another tree has dropped. Yep, looks great. That's it. All, All right, winner. everybody, come on in. It looks like we've got a winner to this competition. What a great competition, but Caleb, it looks like we have a true winner to this challenge. Yeah, we do. It's a good job by both of you. I think we ended up with two trees here that will stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. Not ideal conditions to be uh, digging a hole today, but you guys both showed some real grittiness. Um, Holly, you just did it in a little quicker time. You just won a $500 gift card to Tractor Supply Company. Thank you. Congratulations, Holly. What do you owe your victory to? Planting trees for my mom. <laughs> All right. Well, you finished with time to sparrow, so congratulations. And Kim and Stephanie will let you finish planting your tree over there while we take a short break. But don't you folks go anywhere. When we come back, we'll find out which one of our contestants can wing their way to victory in our bird habitat challenge. Coming up next on Tough Grit. Welcome back. Our experts are ready to give some tips to Holly and Stephanie about the birds we're trying to attract in challenge number two. Everything from the right types of houses to use to the right type of feed. Hummingbirds are a great addition to your yard as far as birds are concerned. Feeders are real simple. You just fill them with nectar and they suck it through the little holes on the bottom. You want to change the feeders about every three to four days just so no mold or fungus grows on the inside of it. You want to also watch your feeder and make sure it's not being drained overnight. If it is, you might consider the fact that other creatures are stealing the nectar, such as bats or insects. If that's the case, you might consider some upgrades such as guards that you can buy to put on your feeders. Holly, if you're trying to attract smaller birds to your property like goldfinches, pine siskins and the like, you should offer them some, some thistle seed and you give it to them in a feeder that looks like this. Basically what happens is, is you fill the hopper with seed, it fills these tubes, the birds land on the tubes and pull the seed out from between the holes here. When considering what house to buy for your bluebirds, you want to consider that they're picky and require certain things with their house. The hole should be 6 to 10 inches above the floor of the house and only an inch and a half in diameter to deter other birds from moving in. You also want to have ventilation holes at the top and drainage holes at the bottom. Holly, an isolated fence post on the edge of a meadow is a perfect place to install a bluebird box. 
This particular box has a properly sized hole, so pretty much bluebirds can fit in, but some smaller species can also fit in. And it's also equipped with an easy to open feature, which allows you to clean out nests that don't belong, like sparrows or whatnot. And also at the end of the year, it lets you clean out the bluebird nest so that the following year, a new pair might choose to set up house there. What time of year do bluebirds usually nest? In the south, they usually start nesting about February. In the north, it's usually about mid-March. And then, in both cases, they'll nest until about August. Holly, if you want to attract purple martins to your property, you got to give them a nice condominium like this. These are really social birds, and they like to live in fairly large colonies. Uh, when you put up the house, though, you want to be sure that you don't open up the apartment units until you see purple martins flying around, or they may become occupied by other birds. And what do I do if that happens, if other birds move in? Well, you can basically lower the house down, clean those nests out. If there are birds like flycatchers and bluebirds, you might put up some bluebird boxes nearby, and the flycatchers and the bluebirds would be likely to move into those spaces because they prefer them. And now it's time for challenge number two, creating our bird habitats. For this challenge, our two contestants will be running a bird pentathlon. We'll have to install a bluebird house, hang a thistle feeder for finches, fill and hang a hummingbird feeder, and then install a purple martin house. Lastly, they'll fill a bird bath. Whew, it's a whole birdie subdivision. Houses and restaurants. The only thing missing is a little birdie mall. Now we've marked out a course for our two contestants to fly through to get everything done. Good luck to both of you, and may the best bird watcher win. Ready, set, go! Bring the box and the wire. Good job, good job, good job, good job. Let's get this good. That's good. All right, just twist them together. Twist them together. Okay, straighten it, straighten it. Good enough, good enough. Stick with us to see who will win the bird pentathlon and who will see their chances of success fly south when we return after these messages on Tough Grit. Nature is the best model for healthy wildlife habitat. Look at the plants along a stream or pond, around a meadow or in the forest. The number and arrangements of plants in good backyard habitat should be similar to these natural areas. Make sure your yard has a variety of plants, such as evergreen and deciduous trees, seeds, berries, nuts, flower nectar, and insects. Diversity of food sources in your yard allows a variety of wildlife to use it. The best habitat for native wildlife is one with native plants. Native plants are more closely matched to the local soil, climate, and wildlife, so they are better in the long run for providing the right kinds of food and shelter. Wildlife need a place where they can be free from danger, out of bad weather, and where they can raise their young. Most animals find shelter in trees or shrubs, but fallen leaves and dead branches can provide shelter for insects and amphibians. Even brush piles, rock walls, rock piles, and hollow logs can be home for various creatures. If possible, designate a special area of your yard for wildlife, an undisturbed space away from human activities, but near enough to a deck or a patio or a window so that the wildlife can be viewed and appreciated. Let the natural world be your best teacher and your yard will be a welcoming home for wildlife. Welcome back. Our contestants are racing through the course to see who can put up their birdhouses and feeders in our bird habitat challenge. And up for grabs is another $500 gift card from Tractor Supply Company. <laughs> That's a lot of money you could use in a finch. I mean a pinch. Hold on. More. Just have to go down. So if he didn't quite fill it all the way up, took her two attempts to fill it completely full. There she goes to hang it. Holly having a little trouble locating that hook. Stephanie's on to the hummingbird feeder. I think they call it a hummingbird because it doesn't like know the okay. words. That's Stephanie's got her hummingbird feeder full. And the restaurant is open for hummingbirds. On to the Purple Martin house for Stephanie. That's good, that's good. It's just fun. Holly's got her hummingbird feeder full. Both contestants now working on the Purple Martin house. In order to see to put it up, let's see. Yeah, but we can put, put it all the way first. on. Okay. There you go. Okay, just push it all the way down. Yep, okay. Okay, don't forget to open that. Yeah. Okay, okay now raise it. Okay, run up to the, turn on the water. Holly's got her Purple Martin house up in the air. Team Tractor's probably having a little trouble getting that Purple Martin house up. 
Watching great waiting on water. Stephanie's onto the bird bath. Yep, your house has to go up, Stephanie. You can leave that running. You can leave that running. Just go lift it up. There you go. Maybe your gravity will just work better. And that's it. Great job, everybody. Great competition. Come on in here, everyone. That was close. But Caleb, I think we have an obvious winner, huh? Yep, good job, both teams. You made it through all five phases of the, of the bird pentathlon. Stephanie, you just forgot to raise up the Purple Martin house. That might have cost you a little time. Holly, you just won a $1,000 gift card to Tractor Supply Company. Congratulations. Congratulations. Holly, what are you going to get with your winnings? I think I'm going to get a new line trimmer. Excellent. And Stephanie, despite coming up a little short today, did you at least learn something and have a good time? I did, Caleb. Well, that's what it's all about. If you're sitting at home with your feathers ruffled thinking, I can do that, here's how you can take part in the Rural America Challenge. To sign up, go to toughgrit.com and click on the I can do that button or look for the advertisement in Grit Magazine. Don't wait, sign up today. So now you know almost everything you need to know about planting trees and creating bird habitats. And if you'd like to learn more, visit toughgrit.com. I'm glad you could be with us today, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Caleb, check it out. I now have the perfect door to my birdhouse, huh? That's awesome. Yeah. But where's the floor? Floor? What do birds need a floor for? Don't they fly? I still have so much to teach you. And I can't wait to learn it. I'm Shannon Riley. And I'm Caleb Regan. And when you see us coming, you know you're in Tough, tough Grit. grit.